So this is a dorsal approach for uh, skateboard fixation with the AccuTrack screw and you know topographical anatomy is always important. You feel for Lister's tubercle and you can even feel for the uh, EPL tendon right distal to it. So um, you're, the idea is, is that you're going to, this is Lister's tubercle, you're going to be exposing scapolunate interval. You want to come a little bit ulnar to it. Um, and the idea is, is that we really just want to be able to place that guide screw in the very, um, you know, proximal part of the scaphoid, just uh, to the radial side of the ligament. And uh, so you make a small incision. You know, if you after you do this a few times, you can probably make it half as big as this one is. Kind of go through skin and dermis, and I always like to. Uh, even in small incisions, uh, elevate my flaps a little bit. And so we're kind of right down on the retinaculum. Here is the uh, extensor retinaculum. You should still be able to kind of palpate Lister's tubercle, which is right here. The EPL tendon is right here. And I'm going to release that so that we can kind of get it out of the way and protect a little bit. Of course, try not to cut it while you're releasing it. So that's a good, you know, landmark. And then, of course, the tendons that you can see right here, these are second compartment tendons or the radio wrist extensors. And so we're just distal. Here is Lister's tubercle, this bony prominence. And then anatomically, if we make a capsulotomy right there, we should be right over the scapholunate interval. Um, this is always uh, something that you have to kind of do uh, carefully because you obviously don't want to cut into the uh, scapholunate ligament. And you don't want to cut your EPL tendon. So one of the ways that you can can do that is to at the edge of your radius which is right here release some of that capsule. Let me get my EPL tendon out of the way now that we say that we know that it's there. And you're going to elevate a little bit of the capsule up here or sorry, the, this is uh, off the dorsal radius. And then, come a little bit this way. And then we will kind of make our capsulotomy. And there, you're starting to see some cartilage. So at that point, you want to make sure that your knife is kind of tangential to the surface of the bone. So that way, because this is the scaphoid, and uh, we'll expose a little bit over this way. So this specimen has a partial scaphoid, scaphoid interosseous ligament injury already that we did not do. Um, here's the ligament, this soft structure, this is a little bit, um, let me flex it down, you'll kind of see a little bit, um, injury in that area, but for purposes of putting this screw in, you're still going to, this is the ligament area, and so we want to go in the scaphoid, kind of right next to the, uh, the ligament, and your target the way you aim it is right down the axis of the thumb metacarpal, right like that. So we can load up a pin now. And uh, this part, we can start to put the K wire in. And I always recommend that you have wrist flexion because you want the scaphoid to be flexed down. You want to be aiming down the axis of the thumb. And you want to start your wire 
and then you're going to check it on C-arm to make sure that you're in a good position. So what I'm looking for here is we, we started putting that wire in. I was, the wrist was flexed a little bit and I was aiming down the first metacarpal. This is what my aim was and it's pretty parallel to my pin. And then what I'm looking at on these images, I will kind of dorsiflex the wrist a little bit, ulnarly deviate because I, ideally I want to be in the central third of the scaphoid and I'm, I think this is really pretty close and then I will roll kind of slowly to a lateral and then I'm going to look where it's going to end up at that joint. And so at that point you can, you can advance it. I, uh, I like to advance using the C-arm because then if your estimations of where you are is uh, off, then you can say you can kind of stop what you're doing. This lets us get an appropriate measurement for the screw, okay? So we use the depth gauge, and on the depth gauge, you know, we want to put a mini in. It's up on the top part, and it measures on the guide. A, it's measuring probably a 24, and a little bit more than a 24, so we take off four. We should put a 20 in. We could probably put a 22, but let's put a 20 in. And so at this point, um, you've made your measurement, and um, one of the things that happens with cannulated screws, uh, and it can be a difficult thing, is that the wire will come out. It, it might come out, but one of the things you can do is purposely put it into the trapezium. That won't hurt the STT joint at all. Um, and then we are going to drill. Uh, they're the first drill we use is the broach drill and slides over the wire and it's just going to go through the cortex and then we use the, the other drill which has marks on it. Um, you can see them um, and give you an idea so we know that this is a 20 millimeter screw that we're going to put in and we're going to drill. The first mark is 18, the second one is 22, so we'll probably drill right in between it. You can also check on C-arm, which is again what I frequently do. Should be good there. This, a lot of times I'll pulse the drill and pull it out and I'll take a picture to make sure I'm not pulling the wire out. Then at this point you can have your assistant grab that wire with a hemostat. Uh, we didn't need to, we were fortunate. And now you're ready to put the screw in. So uh, be careful with the screws um, when in passing them and when you're putting them on the wire, get a good hold of it. And uh, slides down the wire pretty easily, try to keep some soft tissue out of it. And then I, I always will, will start the uh, screw and I kind of turn it slowly and then it will advance very easily and of course in a fractured specimen when you get across the fracture site it gets much tighter and um, at times uh, you, you can use an anti-rotation pin if you would like uh, certainly when you're doing this dorsal approach and you don't have much visualization uh, to kind of actually physically stabilize the distal fragment that's not a bad idea um, and it gets very tight. I always tell the, the folks that are doing this for the first time, turn slowly and you want to bury this uh, below the articular surface. When you finish seating it, if you can kind of no longer see that part of the screwdriver, you are probably in uh, deep enough. You can take your screwdriver off. You can, you can always reapply it kind of wiggle it a little bit, slides off, and you can slide it back down. You know, if you, you feel you need that half more turn, then you can take it out, and you have your wire driver back on. You can take a picture before you take your wire out, make sure that you didn't put in it in too far, and it doesn't look like we did. Um, one thing I can say is there's tremendous compression 
with the AccuTrack 2. And so when your fracture is reduced and you're putting it across the fracture site, it will close that down. So always make sure that you do put in something, put in a screw that's four millimeters shorter or you're gonna be too long when you're done. So then when you wanna see where the screw is, you know, in terms of where it is in the scaphoid, you're in the central third. If you kind of dorsiflex the wrist and all nearly deviate the hand a little bit, you'll get a good picture about where it is. You know, and that would have been really good for a scaphoid waist fracture. And when you rotate around, you'll kind of see where it is. And then, of course, on your lateral, you can see it down the central part of the scaphoid. Um, then, uh, the end of this case, you can do a capsule or a closure. I usually use a uh, three or four O PDS suture for the capsule, and then I close the skin with four O nylon, and they can go into a removable splint at the end of surgery. And I have them back about a week after the procedure, and I put them into a removable wrist splint and begin range of motion exercises. I think that for non-displaced scaphoid fractures, this provides great stability and these people will go on to uh, union uh, about 98% of the time or more. I have not personally had a non-union after uh, percutaneously or small dorsal incision approaches for scaphoid fractures.